Hey everyone, I'm not Dean. If you did not already notice, this is the Absolutely Epic Early Week Podcast brought to you by Roto Grinders. Dean is out of town, and so we have a special film that we'll get to in a second, but this is a fun week. We have the NFL Thanksgiving slate and the weekend slate. We're going to be going over both because we ain't got nothing else to do. This is basically our vacation, and we're out here for Thanksgiving just getting ready for the best slate of the year that happens to only be three games. I am joined here by the great Bobby Fye. How are you doing over there, buddy? You had yourself a pretty darn good weekend this weekend. Uh, hey, man, I appreciate the introduction. Um, but, yeah, no, I had a really good weekend. I had uh, – I almost uh, took down a big tournament on FanDuel. I was still finished second and uh, had a bunch Ooh, of, like, 40K. Ooh. And I And I, <laughs> I played a couple on it. It was weird. I, I was I was talking pre-show, and I'm just going to throw a real quick this story because, like, I, I just threw a couple lineups into FanDuel. Like, like I did a ton of research. I scripted on DraftKings. I played on Fantasy Draft. But then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, my God, I have to get my FanDuel lineups in. So I put in a couple of big lineups and then just made a couple, like, little pivots and adjustments. And I always – when I do that, I always make sure to enter it in the Millionaire Maker, click, click one over. So I was so upset because I dropped from first to second, which was a 60K swing. Um and it was 100 down to 40. And the thing that's crazy is that if I, I didn't, I thought I had entered in the Millionaire Maker because I was just focused on that one tournament. I was just, I didn't even think about what the overall scores were because it's hard to imagine beating fields of hundreds of thousands of people, but it's, or however but many, but it's doable apparently because that lineup, if not for Traquan's last two catches, which they were up 38 to seven at the time. And they honestly didn't have to be on the field for most of those plays. But uh, I would have won that thing. I didn't. I would have finished ninth, and that wouldn't have really doesn't really hurt me. So I'm actually it was like a bad beat that it kind of that they were throwing the ball, but at the same time it ended up working out well for me because now I don't have to sweat the rest of my life and just go oh, well I would have won a half million dollars or whatever it would have been a little more than that on, you know this Sunday. Um, instead, I just feel good about having a really profitable day. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I mean, one of my biggest regrets is waking up on time to change my lineup to take myself out of the Millie maker last year in like week 11 cost myself a million dollars by not sleeping in. No one's ever said that before. I don't think, but I was with you. I was there with you, not sleeping in directly, but I, I was there so I can vouch for that story. It's definitely a true story. Yeah. Son of a biscuit. Oh, well, and we are joined here by someone who I have seen twice in the last or talked to twice in the last 24 hours. One of my favorite people at RG, the man filling in for D D, Dean, Will Priester, Chief Justice, whatever number it is afterwards. How you doing over there, buddy? Been a few hours. <laughs> yeah, it's been a few hours, man. I'm, I'm super excited, man. You know you guys are two of my I, – I, I consider you guys two of my best buddies in the industry. And so uh, I'm excited to come on and, and talk shop with you guys. I always have a good time hanging out and uh, not only talking but learning. You, you know, it, I always take something away when we do these shows, so – I'm super pumped to get on here and hang out and, and ha have some fun uh, while we do some analysis. So uh, really good. Shout out to my man, Bobby. Uh, super excited uh, on Sunday when, when I saw, you know, that what, a thousand percent ROI on FanDuel. I, I got super excited. So uh, ho hopefully some of that magic will wear off on us and you'll see us at the top of the leaderboards here this week. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping so too. I mean, I had, a decent week and nothing, nothing like this Bobby Fee character over here. But <laughs> I, I, ended up, I, I ended up playing so much more on the Monday through Thursday slate than I normally do just because of how much I wanted exposure to this game. And, oh, boy, did it work out well. That was a beautiful game. One of the best I've ever seen in my lifetime and hopefully just a precursor to the Super Bowl. It's going to be a fun NFL playoffs. But we got to focus on this week right now. And we'll start off with the wonderful three-game Thanksgiving slate. I'm not reading off all the games like normal, like Dean does. I'm not reading off every injury. We're just going to get started off with a few subjects that I feel like we need to focus on. The first one I want to talk about is the cheap guys for the Saints. Obviously, Traquan just absolutely went nuts here. They're going up against Atlanta, which we all know how Atlanta is. Drew Brees is incredible this year. Kamara is incredible this year. But we have Brandon Marshall, who should be in the lineup at 3,300, who may be old as, well, either of you two. Um, and we got Traquan 4,700. We got Benjamin Watson at 3,200. We have to get some value on this slate because there's a lot of guys to pay up for. Who are you looking at, Bobby? 
So the, we have this interesting value and I actually don't even think I, I was into the Kirkwood thing. Kirkwood got all of his work early, but they looked to him pretty early and often in that game against the Eagles when it sort of mattered. And Traquan did a lot of his work when it didn't really matter so much. I'm not saying that's the most likely thing, but I'm saying when you're going to have a high owned Traquan, assuming he plays, which I think he will, um, I think Kirkwood probably will have pretty good ownership because of the matchup too. But I'm looking more at Kirkwood than I am than I was at Marshall. Um, I don't know how it's going to play out. I, we'll, we'll see as the week plays on. But like, I, I think I would gamble more on that side right now than I would on Marshall. And I also think there's other guys who are really cheap that are just going to be overlooked, like Taylor Gabriel, who I think is in a really really big spot um, at Detroit on this Thursday slate. So. Uh, just looking for that value, like I'm sort of looking in that direction also, in addition to this, you know, obviously having some interest in each of these Saints receivers, just trying to decide which ones I want to really commit to. All right. Well, over to you. Well, uh, I've been avoiding the Saints for weeks. I was on them really early in the year. Uh, I think weeks one through four or five before Ingram came back. Uh, I legitimately stacked Breeze, Kamara, and Michael Thomas and probably 30 to 40 percent of my lineups every single week and uh, I'm very disappointed in myself if I had one DFS regret this year uh, it's not playing enough Saints on the back end of the schedule Uh, so you know this isn't a spot I'm going to fade them here Uh, I think the unique thing about the Saints is that I've seen recently is their offense has been so good uh, their offense has been their best defense. They just, they've been jumping out to these massive leads and just demoralizing teams. I, I don't think that's the case this week. I think it's a division game. Uh, I think the Falcons are able to, to keep up. I actually think I actually think this game uh, from a whole, uh, I think it's more like 35-28, which will still be pretty high scoring, obviously, for this slate. But I don't see the Saints scoring 55 points this week. I just don't think that's going to happen. And as a result, uh, I, I like the wide receivers, but I'm I'm really just kind of, I'm a lot more interested in the running game this week uh, on a Thanksgiving slate. Uh, this is for sure a spot where I'll look at Kamara and Ingram in the same lineup, like with, without fail. Uh, everyone's going to be on a passing game. We're going to be all over Traquan and Michael Thomas for, for good reason. I'm not saying I won't have any of those guys, but I think if I had to build one lineup out of this game from the Saints side, I think I'd take Kamara and Ingram and then I'd run it back with Ryan and Julio and maybe Sanu and Hooper, the cheaper guys from Atlanta, uh, because I don't think they're going to get as much ownership. Yeah, yeah, no, that's something to definitely look into. Uh, Kamara, the biggest thing that stuck out to me here is last time he played against Atlanta, obviously 15 receptions on 20 targets. That was a ridiculous game there, and Atlanta is still kind of the same terrible defense, although they may get what's-his-name back that could change things up a little bit. But Kamara, 12 targets versus Tampa Bay and 20 versus Atlanta. Like, the, Atlanta is a team, and Tampa Bay is a similar team, that gives up just a huge amount of just massive volume to opposing running backs. I absolutely am with you there. Love Kamara. Um, Bobby, are you paying up for him or Elliot? I'm, I'm, I'm all up on Kamara. Like I made two shell lineups Kamara, like just before this, because this is like one early week podcast. That's really fun because it's not that early in the week. Like we're going to have a Thursday game soon. By the time this comes out, people will start be, be getting their Thursday lineups ready. And remember, you know, we did talk last Monday. I just want to point this out. Our the guys we took for our receivers, everybody we talked about was pretty much like the origin of a lot of my my best lineups. And that was like on Monday night. We really were on to some good things. And I think that this is a this is the spot you want to be on. Like obviously Kamara, this is not like a secret, but like playing Kamara, one of the guys in the passing game, I don't really see how you really want to fade Kamara. I'm more on him than I am on Ingram for this matchup. I've been on Ingram the last couple of weeks. This week it's Kamara for me. Uh, on the other side, I'm just obsessed with uh, – I just don't think you cannot play Julio. If you if you want to make that fade, you better be playing a lot of lineups, in my opinion. I think that there's not even a question who the number one receiver is. This is a good defense, a better – get credit for. Julio is not – he's not matchup – he's more matchup proof than anyone in football. He's putting together one of the great seasons ever. He just didn't have any touchdowns till last the last few weeks. Um, 
I just think that this is like this the easiest like you automatically play Julio you play Kamara um, you play one of the value guys and then move on from there yeah yeah no I'm kind of there with you I'm trying to find it but Julio Jones three straight weeks of touchdowns um, before that he had two or he had however many weeks without a touchdown he had two red zone targets before two weeks ago now he has six he's got matched his season total prior to hand two weeks in a row uh absolutely they're right with you let's talk about quarterback here because we have a real interesting situation obviously alex smith really messed up his leg and that's too bad I always root for that guy even though he's mostly a game manager now we come in and have colt mccoy here at 4700 cheapest guy on the slate going up against Dallas, where they're probably going to be coming from behind. There's one for you, Bobby. Um, and he's only 4.7K. <laughs> he may not have a good wide receiving core, but he has an ability to put up points quicker or put up yards, I think, at a better rate than uh, whatever his name, Alex Smith, does. Plus, there could potentially be the entrance of Chris Thompson again, which would be huge. Um, so are you paying down a quarterback or are you paying up a quarterback, Will? Uh, I, I think you know by now, if you see Mitchell Trubisky on this, like, I don't know if you guys have been listening, but I've probably been the biggest supporter of Mitchell Trubisky on every slate this year. So I'm for sure playing Mitchell Trubisky this week. There's just no way I don't take a quarterback against Detroit. It's just like taking a running back against Atlanta. You just plug them in. Um, you, you know, sir. I agree with that. On, I agree with that 100%. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, on on all my shows last week, I talked about the fact that I thought Cam was the best quarterback on the slate, even though I didn't have him in my main bill because I I, I like, you know, uh, uh, Fitz, Fitzpatrick for the value. I felt like Cam was the best quarterback play on the slate, and, and obviously it showed. I, 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 I think Trubisky is the best quarterback uh, play on the slate because of the matchup. I think Kamara is the best running back play because of the matchup. Uh, if I'm building 100 lineups, I, I might have Kamara in 80 and Trubisky in 70. Like, that, that's just how confident I feel in, in both of those guys uh, performing up to, up to their ability. I, I just think that's where I'm at. No way I'm fading Trubisky against uh, uh, Detroit. Uh, I do want to plug in one running back play. I know we're kind of on quarterback, but Tariq Cohen, like, this is the week. Just play him. Yeah. Yep. He's, he's going to torch these guys. I mean, it just, there's just no way. Yep. Those two guys are going to be in my lineup, hands down. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you with Tariq Cohen. I, I, this is my whole he, – him. He's there in my build. And that's where I'm with Gabriel, though, too. Like, I think that you can get – it used to be secondary receivers against the Lions. It doesn't matter anymore because everyone is terrible. The corners are really bad. Like, Cam could have had a much, much bigger day except for some mistakes that he made including, uh, by the way, that two-point conversion. I don't want to get into how much oh, that one even. <laughs> like, oh, man, just get, get, get into overtime. I had literally five guys in that game, like, everywhere. Um, I, I, I like this. I like the idea. I'm, I'm with the Trubisky play. I'm not as big a fan as, as Will is about Trubisky. Uh, I don't think he's a great quarterback. I think he's got a great system that's literally catering to, like, like a 10-year-old, literally perfectly set up for him. And this game flow – and the way the middle of the field will be open, which is where he tends to look the most often, is going to be, like, extremely beneficial to him. I'm even, I was even considering Burr second, but mostly it's Gabriel and Cohen for me. I think they're going to tear this game up. Um, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to play as much Trubisky as Will, but I definitely – I think you for me it's just you play, just you play Drew Brees. What they were showing to the Eagles might have been a little move. You know, we would have beat you to go to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl last year. But it was weird to watch a team up 45-7 to seven with eight minutes to go in a game at home um, that's got their quarterback on the field throwing passes. That's against Atlanta <laughs> in this spot. What What is Drew Brees going to do? Like, the guy's been over 29, 28, whatever, three games in a row. Sure, the running back touchdown equity, he could lose out to that, and they could dominate this matchup. I think even if they dominate this, if you look at their history with Atlanta, he just goes nuts. Like – nuts doesn't matter where it is just let's just play drew Brees and just keep it simple i like the idea of the trubisky thing but mostly those other two plays and i'm just gonna play drew Brees in most of my lineups i don't i don't really see a giant reason to fade him and playing colt mccoy i think would be the dumbest thing you could do on the slate i mean i've done dumber things in my life that's for certain but i, I mean, drew Brees, just, 
I know. I was just saying I've done dumber things in my life. And Drew Brees is my golf buddy, so I pretty much have to roster him 100% every week. Just how it goes. And it works out great most of the time. Um, one last thing I want to talk about on this Thursday slate before we get on to the main slate. Well, I guess this is the main slate in my eyes. Theo Riddick and LeGarrette Blunt sitting there at 4,500 and 3,400. And you even have Zach Zinner there um, at 3K. Who knows how many snaps any of these guys are going to get. There's the potential that Marvin Jones does not end up playing, in which case I'm not going to be surprised at all if Theo Riddick ends up getting a whole lot of, whole lot of work out of the slot here. These two guys could potentially be in for big games without Carrion Johnson likely not going to play this week. So what's your interest level on either of these running backs or even center um, in this lineup, Bobby? I know Chicago's got a great defense, but you need some value on the slate. Both these guys could very easily offer it, considering all the high price guys. It's absolutely stars and scrubs slate for me. What are your thoughts? I, I have a pretty strong take on this. I'm a little nervous that like later on, as I do a little more research that I might be more wrong than I think. I think it's crazy to play these guys. I think it would be the dumbest thing you could do to play these. Oh, some people. are than not playing Drew Brees. Gosh, get your, get your story straight. I'm not, I, no, no, wait, 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 wait. You're not, I'm not saying anything about you. I'm just saying like, I'm just thinking like, I'm sort of, th- you know, we're going through this slate together and I'm trying to figure this out. And I just can't see any way this works out have a defense that's better geared to make sure like none of these guys are relevant of course with workloads anybody can be but like honestly my guess would be that just they would go back to the regular workload give it like zenner would get like 10 carries uh blunt would get like 10 for the you know the short yardage situations and then you've got riddick if he plays in the slot like like they like we were talking about before uh, last week, I, I don't know, man. For me, I think it's a stay away. I'm more excited at the idea of a potential Chris Thompson coming back. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we'll see. It's still early on the week. We're obviously recording this Monday night. You guys will get it all on Tuesday, but Will, you have any interest in Riddick or Blunt? Man, I'm all about the Bears' defense. Um, I mean, you can play both. Yeah, I, I, I know I can, but I – even on a three-game slate, like, I just think there's so many other wide receiver plays. Like, between this – between the Falcons and New Orleans, I mean, you've got Ridley, Julio, uh, Sanu, and then you've got Thomas, Traquan, Kirkwood. Like, I, I just think there are too many other plays. Even in the Dallas game, which we haven't really been talking about, like, Amari Cooper's still getting all the work. Why, why would I play Kenny Galladay over Amari Cooper in this? Oh, game? we're talking about Theo. I'll, 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 play, I'll play Kenny. I'll, I'll, I'll do a side bet on Kenny Galladay versus Yeah, Amari yeah, Cooper. I will gladly take Kenny Galladay over Cooper. If Jones isn't playing, Kenny Galladay got 14 and 13 targets the last two weeks. You know they're going to be coming from behind. There's two, Bobby. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, but I, I'm talking about – like Kenny Galladay is like a lock, like like borderline lock button for me every week. But like this week, I just I don't care about how good your overall defense is. That actually just forces more targets his way. Um, I I don't care what the situation is or the game script. Like Kenny Galladay is gonna get there. I just don't see him missing personally. But I yeah. love a little debate. I want to hear the Cooper thing because I I know he's getting the work. But like this situation against Washington is just. These like this. This is where I want my defenses, especially for the Cowboys. Like Cow, the Cowboys play slow. They don't have big play, like a big play offense. Washington's defense has actually been pretty stellar, like against number ones. I, I just yeah, no, personally, Was- that's number one. Yeah, no, nah, I, 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 I'm with you. I, I think Washington's been playing really well, but I, I, I think this is a spot where the where the Bears defense dominates. I don't think Detroit's going to put up many points in this game. I really don't. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm thinking Detroit might score 10 points maximum. Mm. I, I, I'm so serious. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. They and could. So, I think currently they have, what, a 21 implied total right now in the game? So, it's I, I, I just – I, I, I've watched enough film on Matthew Stafford to know that he's going to take chances and against a team that's going to put pressure on him, I think he's going to take one too many. And I think it's going to cost him the game. Like, we've seen Matthew Stafford throw three or four interceptions. I mean, I know in some of those games he's still thrown for 300 yards. Like, I'm not saying that. 
I, I just think these I, I think they're going to ha- have too many mistakes this week. And, and I, I legitimately think it's going to cost them the game. I, I can just see the Bears with five to seven sacks, two fumbles, three interceptions, and you look in the third quarter – and this team has only scored three points, and they're down 28-3. to three. Like, that's that's the image I have in my head. And I, I do think Galladay is going to get a bunch of work. I just don't think it's going to be as easy this week. I, I really don't. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. But let's move on to the Thursday slate. And speaking of defenses, I normally wouldn't bring up a defense question, but Jacksonville, with Fournette back in the offense, this defense is entirely deep entirely different they did great against Roethlisberger and now they get a matchup versus Buffalo here um, looking at their implied total for Buffalo they actually have Buffalo as just a three-point underdog but 37 and a half over under in this game Jacksonville's defense let's see what do you think they're priced on on DK this week just give, give me a guess Will four thousand uh, either one either one guys thirty eight hundred four thousand all right, well, let's see. Drum roll, please, if anyone knows 4, how to make the drum. It is 4,000. I honestly just had to open things up there real quick. 4,000, lock of all locks for me. Like, I get that Jared Allen might be back in the lineup. If he isn't, then just absolutely the lock of all locks. But Jacksonville's defense has been good this year, even though people think oh, completely otherwise. And with Fournette back in the offense, it just gives them a whole lot of ability to actually play better because they're not going to be out on the field all the time because Bortles can't get a first down and ends up turning the ball over half the time. So Jacksonville defense, are they back is my question. Bobby stars off. They've been good. Uh, we don't usually talk defenses. That's coming from you who usually says that. I just think like there, there are two defenses that really stand out this week to me. It's Jacksonville and it's the chargers. Um, I think you get this high turnover prone Josh Rosen that the Raiders can rattle even and he can even be good at times, but it doesn't matter. This Chargers defense is going to force pressure. I think that Bose that's... is back. What? Bose, Bose is back. back. Bose is back. Yeah. <sighs> and so that's sort of like it's Jacksonville and the Chargers. I always prefer the home defenses and I get a little discount. So I don't mind taking the Chargers here. Like this is the team that forces turnovers. I know they haven't been at quite the same, but. I, I like this spot for both of those defenses. I think you can pay down other spots, but Jacksonville's for real. They're going to probably be one of the top defenses of the day. I just think if you want a little bit of savings, uh, the Chargers probably offer like a similar, eh, maybe not quite the upside, but pretty high upside for the situation. Yeah, yeah. Will, you spinning up on deep? Oh, man, I, I, I almost feel like I have to. Uh, I, I played the Jets defense against this team. I played a couple defenses against this team. And for some reason, every time I've targeted them, I've gotten burned. Like when I played the Minnesota defense. I mean, I, I, I don't know what happened there, but uh, I, I'm for sure playing the Jaguars this week. I do think there are a couple other ones like Baltimore and the Chargers and, and Indy. Like th- there are a couple defenses that I actually really like this week. But, you know, cream of the crop, I think, are the Jaguars, Chargers, and Ravens, and they're all at the top. And um, I don't think you can go wrong with either. But I'm for sure playing the Jaguars at Buffalo. There's just no way I fade them this week. Yeah, well, we already hit the over on the amount of time spent talking on defense. I thought we would. So let's move on to the most infuriating thing that's happened in all sports in my lifetime, which is the benching of Ryan Fitzpatrick for what the third time this season second time this season who knows way too many times is all I know Winston came in there and seemed to do pretty well I don't care if he's a good quarterback in this Tampa Bay offense they are going to put up huge numbers every single time he may turn the ball over he may throw three pick sixes but he's also going to go throw three touchdowns to his own team we have Winston sitting there at 6k going up against San Francisco what's your interest level Bobby I'd rather just pay 6-4 for luck, but I am very interested in the passing game and this game as a whole. I don't think Winston is the guy I'm going to air with. Like, weird thing, I'm just – I don't think he's getting pulled at halftime even no matter what's happening, but I just – why don't we just play Andrew Luck every week and feel good about it? Why don't we just play Andrew Luck and just feel good about it? And we could play Andrew Luck, we could play Russell Wilson, we could play Cam Newton. 
the, I, I just am, that's that's who I'm looking at right now. I, I am I don't not going to play really any Russell Wilson. He's going to go anywhere else. Oh, you're not going to play any Russell Wilson? Why not? Um, because Seattle is the most run-heavy team in the entire league. Pete Camaro is, Pete Carroll is absolutely committed see, to that. See, see, how that. see how that works against Carolina. Let's just see how it works. Um, I think it'll work out fine versus Will, Carolina. Will could weigh in on this one. Yeah, Will. Will, t- talk to me about uh, Winston being – the worst quarterback of all time and the best pass offense of all time. And talk to me about Russell Wilson, if, if he's viable this week. Uh, I, Russell Wilson may have to be viable this week, maybe. Uh, we'll see. I, I want to talk about this Buccaneer situation first. First of all, how, how awful has this coaching staff been with this quarterback situation this year? Every, every week, it's quarterback roulette. In, with that organization this week it's Jameis oh this week it's oh well we're going to switch it up again why don't they just let both of them play two quarters a game one play the first one play the second one play, because that's pretty much what they're doing anyway one's playing the first half one's playing the second half just just figure it out and if neither one of these guys are your guy send them on their way let them get a new contract and uh, and pick you up somebody else in the draft. All right, now that I got that off my chest, because Fitzpatrick tanked all my good lineups that I had, Bobby, by the way, uh, I, I can't play Jameis for that reason. Uh, I know the San Francisco defense seems like they haven't been as good, but, you know, I, I'm just not touching that quarterback situation anymore, and maybe that's to my detriment. You know, uh, I, I try not to let my emotions get involved. Tampa Bay is at home, um, but I'll just – if I want to get exposure to one of these guys, I'll just play Mike Evans, Humphreys, or Godwin, or Jackson. I just will not touch these quarterbacks because I don't ever know if they're going to finish a game or not now. And I, that's a legitimate concern. W- wouldn't you guys agree? I mean, if Jameis throws three interceptions yeah. in the first quarter, don't you think Don't you think Fitzpatrick is going to get benched? I mean, don't you think Fitzpatrick Yeah, their season come isn't out? over yet. Like, yeah, it's their season weird. isn't over yet. That's what the thing is. So, like, they can try and still win games, which means they would could make moves like that. That's something to consider. But that's not even my biggest, like – but the funny part is Fitzpatrick was on his way to having a big day regardless of the three interceptions he threw on, like, right. you know. And that's frustrating. So, why wouldn't we just – and there's one, you know, why wouldn't we pay just a tiny bit more? Andrew Luck just throws three touchdowns every, every game, basically. Uh, you know, Tom right. Brady – an angry Brady with a week off, by the way, at the Jets who are giving up big plays left and I'm right. Like, I, I'm not sure that I'm playing Brady, but the best play in, of, of the week, it, and we've said this before and we've been wrong. We've also been right on it, but it's been a while since we've been right. It, it, it is, the, is in that game, in my opinion, um, and maybe two of the best plays of the week. But Well, that's let's a, finish up quarterback first because there's two more guys sorry. that I want to get to. No, don't apologize. Don't ever apologize, Bobby. Be a dick. It's better, better radio. Um, <laughs> uh, so we talked about uh, Russell Wilson at 5,600. 200 cheaper. We have Nick Mullins going against one of the worst pass defenses in the entire league. It's, it's, it's against Tampa Bay. Mullins is. Yeah, it's against Tampa Bay. Mullins in his two I'm starts has been up to talk to. Watch. Uh, And then one of the more interesting situations, this is based entirely on Flacco playing or not, is Lamar Jackson, who's a 100% stone-cold lock for 100 rushing yards going up against Oakland. Best running back in the league right now. (laughs) But if Flacco is out, what's your interest in Jackson and Nick Mullins going up against Tampa Bay? Will, you start us off. So... How does Lamar Jackson come out and put up college stats on on Cincinnati? The only thing he didn't do was throw a couple touchdowns uh, and, and run for one. Uh, I, I I don't think you need Lamar Jackson here. I think you're going to get something similar. I, I, I guess here's the thing. Now that we're talking about it, Bobby, Bobby and Grant, I, I do want you guys to weigh on this. I know you asked me, Grant, but – it almost – doesn't it almost feel like we just got a Lamar Jackson floor game? Like, isn't, isn't that what, what just happened yeah. this past week? Didn't we get a – Zero he, touchdowns. He didn't score Zero any touchdowns. touchdowns. He got 19.7. He's going up against Oakland, who – Yeah, but he they're... ran for 117 yards. I mean, come on. Like, he ran 27 times. Like, this is not 
I, I don't know what this is. I love Lamar Jackson. I was the, I said I wrote it. I you can probably go back to my tweets. There's two things I wrote on draft day, and the three things I said that Baker Mayfield was a was a bad pick at number one. Should have been Saquon, and they could have taken a quarterback at number five. Lamar Jackson and Nick Chubb would be the best steals of the of the draft. Lamar Jackson is a quarterback, though. Like, he actually is. I've watched him play enough football. This is not yeah. a guy who's a running all-the-time quarterback. That's this weird gimmick thing that they did. I don't think that this is going to necessarily be what you see going forward. I don't think he's viable this week. I'm really interested to see how it plays out. I don't think you're going to be looking at 15-plus rushes every week. Um, I think you're going to no, see no, a no, guy no. who's going to be in the 10 range. And, and Russell Wilson, and just to give you a feel for it, is 7.8 this year. Um, he, I think he runs the most cams around seven, I believe. I'm not sure about that one. Um, but Lamar Jackson is not going to run the ball this many times. He's not a viable play, even against this defense. Uh, in my opinion, I just like everyone else around him much, much better. And I do feel like there, like what Will said, there's some feeling like maybe this is kind of a floor game, but I, I, I'm just not banking on it. I like the other guys around him. I, I'll take my three touchdowns from Luck, and who knows what happens with Jack? Like, who knows what they run? I, I really don't know. Well, 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 here's what I'm saying, Bobby. The, the reason why I said a floor game is because I, I don't know if they knew whether or not Jackson was going to play this week. So I, I honestly think them not knowing for sure, because, you know, all week they were teeter-tottering around, okay, if Flacco's okay Sunday, we'll play him. And, and I think it, it got late in the week, and it was like, okay, well, he's not going to play this week. Okay, Lamar, we, we've got to come up with a way to try to win this game in the simplest form, in the easiest way for you. And I felt like the easiest way was, uh, uh, you know, the RPO situation, and he just took off and ran when he felt like the lineman bit down. But – I'm with you, Bobby. Like, if you go back and watch this guy's college film, he put up big passing numbers, three and 400 yards a game. Mm -hmm. Like, so so I guess the reason why I'm saying it's a floor game is because he didn't get any touchdowns. And if he gets around the goal line, I do think he's going to pull it and run. But he's got the ability to push the ball downfield like a Mahomes. I'm not saying he's Pat Mahomes. I'm saying he can get the job done vertically. And, you know, with a guy like John Brown and, and, and Crabtree, which is more of a possession receiver now, and these 50 tight ends that they have, I just think against Oakland, I, I don't like the price on Jackson this week, which is why I'm, I'm off of him. I still think he runs it 10 times for 50, 60 yards. I think this is the week if they know Flacco's not going to play, they give him a real game plan. I think he dials it up down the field. Like, I, I could see him putting up – 250 yards passing, three touchdowns, and one rushing. Like, I, I can legitimately see that. And that's why I was saying, wasn't that more of a floor game? Because he had to run. They didn't, he didn't have enough time to prepare for a full game plan. I hear you. I hear you. Those are good points. Yeah, and something to mention that I don't know if it's a complete and total simile because obviously Griffin in his rookie year was a much, much better passer than Lamar Jackson will probably be immediately. Maybe later on that will change, but – Griffin in his rookie year, I think in his first, what, seven games, he had a 70-yard rushing game. He had an 82-yard rushing game. He had a 138-yard rushing game. So I think Jackson being a viable – and he also had six, seven rushing touchdowns. So they have a propensity to run in their first game if they're a very mobile quarterback that a, lacks a little bit of NFL readiness throwing the ball. So just saying that, either of you guys not playing Mullins at all, going up against – Tampa Bay, again, Tampa Bay. Yeah, I, I like Mullins, Bobby. And I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to give too much analysis on that. Like, I, some certain situations, Bobby, I don't even have to talk about it. Like, we know Atlanta's bad. We know Detroit's bad. Tampa Bay's bad. I, I think Mullins can get the job done. Yeah, I understand it. I just like other quarterbacks. I guess that's where I'm at. I actually – maybe I'll, I'll, I'll pivot later in the week. But I just don't see a whole lot of reason. There's not a whole lot of value that's different. You don't win the games with your quarterbacks. I don't want to lose them. You know what I mean? This is the truth. Like, you're not right. separating yourself by giant amounts unless you're going to use running quarterbacks. So I'm always biased towards Cam and Russell Wilson. Um, and I used to be towards Brady for the same reason, because you get that quarterback sneak. It makes a difference, those extra points. You know, that's the only real way of separating. So 
I just, I don't think that I'm going to focus heavily on trying to get creative with my quarterback decision making. I'm going to stick with the four guys who I really like. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, let's move on to running back. So we have an interesting situation here. Hunt and Gurley, I believe, are both on by. Um, Kamara is playing in the Thursday game. I can't remember who's playing Monday night and Sunday night. But the top three priced running backs we have are Barkley at 9.1K, Gordon at 8.6, McCaffrey at 7.9, and then Connor just behind at 7.8. Um, it's interesting. Like, almost every single week this NFL season has been, okay, you pay up at running back and you just move on. This week, I don't know if it's so cut and dry. We have David Johnson at 7'3", Fournette at 6'7", and Chubb at 6'3". Fournette is getting 28 carries a game, just like he was the last year. He is priced way too cheap. He's going against Buffalo, which I expect them to be leading, and not coming from behind. There's three, Bobby. Um, <laughs> I And then Chubb just seems incredible, and he's going up against a porous Cincy defense. Like, are you paying up at running back? Or are you just going in the middle class and spending your money elsewhere? Will, tell me. Tell me what I should do. Well, I, I, I do think you can pay up. I, I, I honestly think this is Marlon Mack week. Uh, we, he's put up some big games. We've kind of been off of him. And this week he gets a matchup with Miami, who's been dreadful on the ground. And, Mar and, and now his price has come back down and we've forgotten about him. And I, I, I legitimately think it's Marvin uh, Marlon Mack week. Uh, if you ask me the running back that I think I'm going to pay up for, uh, I, 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 think, I, I think, think it's time for me to go back to James Conner now. 7,800, did have a good game last week. They're going into Denver. I think they're going to lean on him. I, I think James Conner's the play this week. And um, I, I love Saquon, like, big time. L love Saquon. But um, – I think there's more value in guys like Connor, you know, uh, Sony Michelle, Fournette, David Johnson, and, and my man Marlon Mack this week. I, I don't mind spending up for sure. Like I, I, I never mind spending up. I always love Melvin Gordon because I get him at such lower ownership. But unless something crazy comes out as far as value later in the week, and it very well could, I'm going to be trying to save every penny I can to to, to build an optimal lineup. And I think optimal this week is, you know, in that James Conner, David Johnson, Leonard for that range. That, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, and something to be said is Conner did have nine targets this last game. He only had nine rushing attempts the week before, only 13 when they were blowing him out anyways. Weeks before that, he was basically up around 20 every single week. Denver obviously has one of the best pass defenses in the league, but has been not great versus the run. Bobby, are you paying up? And if so, who do you like? Or are you going middle range? So we missed the best play of the week somehow. You're going to say J Nobody James did. White, aren't you? No, it's Josh Adams, and it's not even, like, really close. Like, Josh Adams is – if he doesn't end up by a chalk on Sunday, somebody make, somebody's making a mistake or he's hurt. Because Josh Adams was going to have a monster game this last Sunday, and it took me the first drive and a half to realize it. And then, of course, they end up getting blown out. The game script – changes they've got three running back situations so it's different he's 3800 they love this kid he's super talented they can use him in the passing and the running game he had six targets still in this week where he still wasn't even on the field all that much because of the blowout well he was a little bit because of it but he started the game anyway josh adams at 3800 against the giants defense that i still don't believe in it's just way too cheap it's the easiest value if people don't get on this Big mistake, in my opinion. I don't like playing this Eagles roulette running game. I think this is a different situation. I don't either, Bobby. Oh, God, yeah. I hate it. I hate What's it. That? You know, I, we, we I hate it. This is different with Josh Adams. I'm telling you, this guy's taking the job. It's a different situation. It's like it's like what happened with Green Bay. We didn't like that running situation. And then Aaron Jones gets the job at some point. And speaking of which, on another guy who got the job this year but has been hurt is Matt Breda. And we haven't talked about him at all. Matt Breda is going to go nuts. This is like the perfect Matt Breda 30 fantasy point game. And no one is going to be paying attention to the fact that he busted out in the last game because it wasn't on the main slate of anything. And he's going to go nuts. He hasn't been healthy in forever. Even that Giants game, I don't think he was fully healthy. Finally got a lot of time off, 10 days. Actually, it's going to be more than that. No, it's going to be two weeks. Matt Breda is, is an awesome play at 5,700. That's where I'm going. Those two guys – 
stand out. I'm happy to play up, pay up for Saquon and McCaffrey too, because I think there's potential value at receiver. Um, I'm not as interested in, in Melvin Gordon or I, I'm, I like James. What about Conner. Fournette? I need to hear your thoughts on Fournette and Chuck. Lo, sorry, lo, love Fournette, love Fournette. Forgot about that, and then I'm done. All right. So, so Bobby, one last thing. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, Bobby's telling us to load up on the cheap running backs this week. Breda, Marlon Matt, Sony Michelle. Bobby, is it going to be cheap running back week again? We had this I a couple so. weeks ago, and everybody thought we were crazy, and you looked but up. By the way, we also and, didn't even mention, like, Philip Lindsay, by the way, who could right, go nuts. In, right. In I, it it like, might be cheap running back. I'm excited. Bobby just got me excited. It, I, it's, it. I think it's cheap running back week. I'm excited. Bobby just got me. No, I was I was going to make a joke about Bobby. I decided not to. It's way too <laughs> way too low hanging fruit. fruit. Uh, wait, oh, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. One more thing, man. One more thing. I, I, I'm sorry. I know we got to move. Please forgive me, guys. Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake is 4700 in a game where they're going to be behind. I I just yeah. If if you're scripting, oh my gosh, Bobby, you, you just got me. I started dumpster diving in. He yeah. popped up. Oh, man. Guys, what about LaShawn McCoy at 4,200 after a 27-point week? I, I don't like him as much, but I, I don't hate it either. <sighs> oh, man. I kind of I kind of get it, too. I'm always yeah. having McCoy. <sighs> Jesus, uh, there's a there lot. There are a yeah. lot of options here. I this is going to be a pay down week. Uh, I, Bobby, By the I'm way, serious. there's one more other guy who's getting work, too, that nobody else is talking Chris about. Right Peyton Barber. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. We're never talking about Peyton Barber. Ever. Peyton Barber had 100 rushing yards and a touchdown oh, last week. If you don't like him, take Josh Adams for the same or for 100 cheaper against the defense he just went off against. Oh, like, oh gosh, I'm like, scripting this week. I am absolutely. There's a lot of <laughs> options. Oh, God. Oh, oh, this is my, oh, this has been my favorite part of the show. It's cheap running back week. Oh, man. You heard oh, it here first. Okay. All right. Epic yeah. early week. So let's. Uh, we'll skip wide receiver for a second. Come back to it. Let's talk tight end. If it's cheap wide receiver, or if it's cheap running back week, and tight end is an absolute dumpster fire, like it is every single week. Ooh, ooh I don't think so. Sorry, this year tight end is a dumpster fire. No, I think this week is like this year. Like two, this year. This. Yeah. Actually, oh, I'm sorry. I just meant this week is two of the best. Yeah, games. Sorry. we had Zach Ertz, who prior to last week was on pace to I think set the tight end reception and target record, um, just absolutely crushing on a weekend week out basis. Let everyone down this last week. Kittle, someone who seems to get overlooked a lot, has been one of, is having one of the best tight end years we've seen in a while from someone not named Kelsey or Gronk. And has absolutely been crushing. Gets a matchup against Tampa Bay, who is so terrible over the middle that Bobby yells at me if I say that they're not the worst in the league. <laughs> Gronk also fifty one hundred. Are we spinning up of these three tight ends, Bobby? Yeah, I don't even know what Gronk's situation is. Actually, I'm more likely to avoid that thing. But I just want to point out that Tampa Bay gets crushed over the middle on a oh weekly basis. Sometimes it's by slot receivers. Everyone playing the by the epic week podcast drinking game. That's another drink for you. <laughs> um. Yeah, how do you not have some interest in, like, Kittle and, and Ertz here? Like, I think you could double tight end it almost with some of the other things that are out there. I really like both these spots. The Giants are really, really bad and have gotten away with it with mostly a schedule that didn't wasn't punishing for the tight end. Ertz had a terrible week because he faced New Orleans, who's awesome at that one thing, stopping the tight end, just like the Jets are, which is why I'm avoiding Gronk this week. Um, Zach Ertz and Kittle are in spots to just completely smash – it's just deciding between the two or playing them together for me. I'm paying up um, as, as far as I'm looking because it's really those guys. And then I get all the way down to Joku um, and uh, Ricky Seals Jones before I have much interest. And I'm not all that interested in those guys. So I'm paying up for those two guys at tight end because I can save with what we're doing at running back. Yeah. Yeah. Will. Yeah, man. It's just, it's just paying up for me. Like, honestly, as far as my scripting situation this week, I think I'm probably going to tighten up my, my tight end player pool to about probably three or four. And I think I'll be just fine. Like if I get 40% exposure to Ertz and 40% exposure to Kittle, like I just don't think I'll lose. 
I, I think both of these guys are going to have big weeks uh, because they both get the volume. Like, there's just – I just don't think you can lose with either of these guys this week. Um, and, and so, I'm – those are going to be my main two targets. Uh, don't mind Jared Cook. Don't mind Olsen, of course. Don't mind Evan Ingram. Like, they're guys I don't mind. But Kittle and Ertz, just just, just fire them up. Those are the guys you need to target. I don't care how chalky they are. They're the, they're the optimal plays, especially with them both being reasonably priced at 64 and 6,200. That, that's still too cheap, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about one interesting guy I think is – Cameron Brake, O.J. Howard is going to be likely out for this game. I mean, obviously, it's Monday. We don't know. But Brake is sitting there at 3600 if you do want to save some money for whatever. If you somehow have extra money, don't have extra money to spend at tight end, then Brake there should be getting a boatload of targets. We've seen O.J. Howard do great this season. Winston's a guy that loves looking to him in the red zone. The fact that Howard didn't get touchdowns in the last two weeks or Brake is mostly for the fact that I mean, Fitzpatrick didn't really do too much in the red zone, and it was just an aberration this last week when they were coming from behind. There's four, Bobby. Um, any interest in Brait, Will? Yeah, I mean, if O.J. Howard is out, then Brait's going to be the mega chalk immediately. Uh, he's 3,600, and uh, if I'm going to get chalk Cameron Brait, then if he becomes the chalk, I'm just going to go up to the next guy on the next rung, and I'm going to take David Njoku, who's – been overlooked because he hasn't gotten targeted as much, but he's also been hurt. And Cincinnati's been god-awful through the air as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if break becomes the chalk, I'm guaranteed to fade him and take David Njoku, period. Guaranteed. And, and, and you know, Ertz, Kittle, Njoku, those are probably going to be my top three tight ends this week, no matter what. I don't care if uh, O.J. Howard is out. Like, those three are just going to be my top on uh, tight ends. All right, Bobby, any break left if O.J. Howard is out? Fine with it. Like, um, yes, for sure, if O.J. Howard's out. Uh, I'm interested, but, I, I like, you know, Njoku, these guys are okay. I still think I'm mostly paying up. Um, the only go. really, really low-end guy that I would talk about uh, that I, we didn't mention is Chris Herndon. I just think somebody from the Jets has a game here because the New England defense is really slow, and they're they're really bad. And I think it being in New York, like I'm trying to find one of the cheap spots on the Jets. There's another one that I prefer at wide receiver spot. Um, but I I just am open to the idea of Herndon potentially going off against a New England team that's just really bad over the middle also. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've exhausted a few of the fun positions. And we got one more left, wide receiver, where we normally have an abundance of star caliber players. But Michael Thomas is not on a slate because he's playing on Thursday. Same with Julio Jones. The two got, only two guys over 8K are Antonio Brown going up against the top pass defense in the league right now, according to DVOA, and Odell Beckham Jr. going up against Philly, who has not been an easy matchup. And although Beckham is getting 10 targets pretty much every single week, except for the one week he plays Tampa Bay, which is insane to me. Um, like, are we paying up for them, or even Mike Evans, Juju, A.J. Green can potentially come back, which Bobby says every single week, is a top-10 wide receiver? Are we paying up for these guys, Bobby? No, <laughs> for Will doesn't know that I don't think that about A.J. Green. Sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, wait, wait, who are we talking? Who's talking? Whose turn is it? It's you, Bobby. Who, top it's your turn, my friend. Top uh, price, guys. We paying up for him? Right. Are we going mid-tier, low-tier? What are we doing? I have no problem with Beckham. He's crushed Philadelphia a bunch of times in the past. No problem going up there. Money to spend, like we said, we spent, you know, I'm spending some on tight end, but have money to spend from the running back situation that I like. I think that it's mostly mid-upper tier. Like, I'm obsessed with Josh Gordon this week. I think that it's like – it's time, man. It's time to happen. They haven't converted on the big plays enough. I just see it happening here. I think they're going to line them up all over the place. I'm not worried. The Jets have given up huge plays. Um, the season to wide receivers, Kenny Stills, I believe it was, or some one of those guys had a big game against them earlier this year. I just think that it's, it's just, you know, Josh Gordon, it's just we're due. He's too cheap for what his upside is. I'm just going to play him and I'm going to play the other guy right at the same price, just a little bit above him, T.Y. Hilton. Uh, obviously, we love T.Y. at home, went nuts last week against Tennessee, which, you know, 
as a lot of us had him on, that was huge, hugely profitable for me. I think this is another good spot against Miami, who again has given up some monster plays to uh, to another guy who I like, who I'm going to get to in a minute. This is a bad segue, but Robbie Anderson, uh, who lit up Miami before uh, earlier in the season with those two monster plays. I just think I could see T.Y. at home getting loose a couple times, and he's going to get plenty of work separate from that. So I love T.Y., and I, I, I want to pair someone with Luck, and I don't trust anything else because Luck's going to throw three different touchdowns to three different tight ends, and it's really hard to keep track. Um, <laughs> and then it's Mike Evans. I love Mike Evans. Um, I, I like the the passing game. I prefer – I always prefer just Jackson with Fitz and Evans with Winston. Um, and, again, I'm okay with paying up for those guys, but this is more where I'm living, and I just – I feel really comfortable here. I think there's a lot of like, I think even uh, if for some reason AJ doesn't play, like going down to Tyler Boyd at 6K, I think is interesting. And I really just want to throw out just two more names uh, or two more things. Uh, the Seattle Carolina game, I think somebody shakes loose and breaks free for Seattle in the passing game here. I'm going to bet on probably Baldwin or more. And on the other side, I'm going to run it back again with DJ Moore. Like, I, I don't think it's a total fluke, and Will can probably correct me because he knows his team better. But I, I, I'm I, maybe I'm biased because it won me some money, but I'm going to go back to it and take another shot here. Like, I sort of like that game. I, again, I, so I sort of looking for an excuse to pair someone with him. That stood out to me. And then uh, just my final guy is – my final guys are Larry Fitzgerald's too cheap and Emmanuel Sanders is going – to have a big week and he's way too cheap against this former team well honestly bobby was talking so much i'm not even sure if i asked you about this question yet so did i <laughs> yeah you just asked me about the receivers because you said you know there weren't a lot of high-end plays that jog in your memory yeah yeah you you, you paying up at wide receiver are you going mid-tier you going low tier like this, well, this is the softest pricing weekend on dk i think i've seen yeah, well, well, like I said, man, if, if it's going to be cheap running back week and whether we take one or two of them, it won't matter. I'm spinning up at tight end. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do at quarterback completely yet. Hey, we already uh, but, decided it's Lamar Jackson for 150 yards. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So, so yeah, if we plug in Jackson, then uh, I, I'm for sure. I, I think Mike Evans is the play this week. Um, you know, I, I think I think Bobby nailed it completely. If Fitz is in, you take Jackson. If 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 uh, Jameis is in, you take Evans. Um, and, and so Evans is probably going to be the first guy in my lineup from the wide receiver position this week. Uh, I'm with you, Bobby. I like Gordon. I like Tyler Boyd. Uh, I, I like Emmanuel Sanders. I, I like Doug Baldwin. I like Fitz. There's just a lot of guys in this range that I really like. And, uh, you know, we've seen wide receivers kind of torch Carolina a little bit. Not every game, but but tight ends have been giving us problems. And, God, I know we're not on tight end, but <laughs> I'm sorry, but Nick Vanette this week against Carolina. Oh, thank you. At, I wanted at, to. 2,700. Thank I, I, I mean, I'm not kidding. The only reason they didn't get burned last week is the Lions don't really have one. Yeah. Nick Vanette's probably – going to catch a touchdown this week and, and have 50, 60 yards. All right, back to wide receiver. Tyler Lockett's probably a, a really good play this week. I mean, he's become a, a favorite of, uh, uh, of Russell Wilson, and he's been really efficient. Even in limited targets, he's just had good games. I mean, he really hasn't had a game, I think, above six or seven targets. Yet seven targets is the most he's had. He's had. But if you look at his game log, he's just been steady. He hasn't had any slate-breaking performances. But at 5,200, I'll take 19 fantasy points all day, every day. And I think, I think you know, he, he'll probably get close to that this week because Russell Wilson is going to have to pull out some magic to win in Carolina after we've taken two really bad losses, uh, both on the road at Pittsburgh, at Detroit. Now we're coming back home in a game we have to win to keep our playoff push going. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think these Seattle guys are, are, are in play. And then I've, I've got one more guy – uh, that that's in the lower tier here that, that I want to bring up. I don't, I don't like this guy like in real life per se, but Antonio Callaway could have a really big uh, gross. Why, why would you say that? against Cincinnati who's been really get getting beat up by the long ball. Uh, and that's what Antonio Callaway is. He's a vertical threat. 
And if they connect on any of these vertical passes, he could have a really big day. I don't like Antonio Callaway, but the bottom line is Cincinnati's been awful. And at 3,800, if you're scripting, I think you have him in, you know, a, a few lineups. Yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of right there with you on Mike Evans. I like everything you say. I just want to mention a few guys and get your thoughts on them. We're getting going late in time, guys. Sorry if we go long. If you want to, you can stop listening to us at any point. But I suggest you keep listening because we are spitting straight fire. Willie Sneed, if Jackson's back in, he did throw him eight targets this last game. Sneed has had eight targets in the last two and 11 in the game before that. He's priced at 4400 DJ Moore went and crushed this last week with 31 points here. Um, he seems to be more involved in the offense. See, I was a decent defense, but he's 4,600 That was here. my guy. That was my guy. I saw oh, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I stopped paying Just attention. like it was about Donovich night in basketball, it was a more, it's a, it'll be a more Sunday in football. <laughs> All right. Both more. Um, so more is on either side. Let's see. I'm going to keep reading through. Chris Hogan is 3,800. I don't think anyone has any interest in him. And Nunwa, uh is going to be – 3,700 going against the Patriots, and they will be coming from AI. That is number five, Bobby. Um, 3,700 there. I don't know if uh, what's his name is going to be back, but I mean, regardless, that's just a cheap, cheap price tag. Also, Jermaine Curse at 3,500. Any interest in any of those guys, either of you, or can we move on? Can't play Curse, in my opinion, because I think you're trying to take advantage of the slow defense of, of New England, but I do like the Anunua call, and I have him in, in one of my shell lineups. All right, Will? Yeah, yeah, I don't mind some of those cheap guys. I don't think I'm going to need them all this week. And because of the way construction is going, I just don't think I'm going to need them all. But but I, I don't hate them, especially a new one. If he can get back to his, you know, eight to ten targets a game, he, he could have a big day. Yeah, I mean, well, you can just 10% everyone. Uh, just be like, Dean, he's not here this week, so someone has to do it. Raz and Dean had to do it once this podcast, but – that pretty much uh, leads us to the end of the actual informational portion of our podcast. If you guys don't want to hear some nonsense now, I figure we have to tell you just stop listening. Uh, but we've got some nonsense to get to. We had our bold calls last week, which absolutely crushed. It was T.Y. Hilton for Bobby, obviously one. Uh, who did Dean have? He had Galladay. I think Dean actually had T.Y., but he started freaking out about it. And he's like, you can't play T.Y. in a cash game. And I said, well, I'll take him. And you can have Galladay. And he said, no, no, I think I'll take T.Y. Like, and anyway, but they I, <laughs> Galladay. I mean, speaking of which, Bobby, how are those short shorts coming along? What are you talking about? <laughs> <You're too bad. laughs> oh, man, did I razz you good. I honestly don't get it. Oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Grant lost this week. Grant, you're the one who's going to be punished, too. That's the funny part. You yeah, so <laughs> we didn't come up with a tweet. If you want, you can come up with one, or we can save it for oh next gosh. week. And if I lose again, we can double down, and I will make a complete dummy of myself regardless. Um, do you want to save it for next week when Dean gets back? Or yeah, let's, do it. let's do it. We'll save it. We'll save it. Let's All right. It. And, Will, do you want to participate in the tweets or consequences portion of the show? And we will tell you what yours is on this show next week if you want to. Oh, man. I, I, listen, I can't do the show and not participate. That's what I, I like to hear, Will. <laughs> Plus, you're the nicest guy in the world. So even if you lose, I can't be that mean because I'll just feel <laughs> so darn bad. All right. So I listening through the show, I think we can do lower-priced quarterbacks, since Bobby seems to love him some Russell Wilson. We can do lower-priced running backs, since Bobby seems to love him some Joss Adams, and we also would like him there. Or – I don't think we can do tight ends because we all just love the same guys here. So quarterbacks, or lower price quarterbacks or lower price, price running backs to the category. Will, you're the new guy. I'll let you decide. Man, let's go running backs. <laughs> Pick of the litter. Pick of the litter. Let's go running backs. I love it. I love it. All right. Point we're just dollar. going point per dollar. I will set the limit at 6.7 if that works for you guys. <laughs> oh, man. <that's, laughs> what a, what oh, an interesting my. number that you came up with, that 6.7. <laughs> Yeah, that, no, there's no, a reason not behind. Matter, we're not going to – no, we said lower running backs, and you picked, like, the highest little limit guy we were going to play. <laughs> let's, pick, let's, let's do something tricky, man. Like, don't take the chalk guy who's going to get 30 carries in the perfect situation. We <laughs> no all one above 6K. Play. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be nice then. Um, we'll go 4.6K if that works for you. I'll go with Chris Carson. Oh, you want to go un- – wait, wait, wait. I was just talking about under 6K. Okay, fine. <laughs> we, we're talking about I mean, 5K we- range. 
Fine, Chris Carson. You got Chris Carson. That's yeah, I'm mean. guessing you want Josh Adams. Is that who you're sticking I'll take, with? I'll take Josh Adams. It's point per dollar, so that's not bad. Uh, we left Will with go. nobody. Will, do you want Chris Carson? Oh, Will, you can have Chris Carson. No, 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 no. We're good. We're good. We're going under. Under. Yeah, we'll make it six four point seven if you want Drake. No, 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 no. We'll, we can keep it at four point six. Uh. <laughs> Man, this this you this. got LaShawn McCoy just looking you in the eyes there. Four point two K, one of the best running backs in NFL history. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh I, I can't take LaShawn McCoy against the defense. I, I just I cannot. What I will say though is is this. Isaiah Crowell has had a big game. J E T S. I knew you were on there. <laughs> but I'm not going to take him either. You know who I'm going to take? No, You're seriously. Take Elijah McGuire. That's the real play. <laughs> no, I've, I've got another guy. I've, I've got another guy. Who is it? I think I'm going to take Frank Gore. Oh my gosh. I uh, love that call. That is insane. That's the guy. That's the first time ever for us. I think I'm going to take Frank Gore at 3,600. Oh, the guy that gets forgotten every single time and occasionally go off. You recommended Drake a minute ago, and now you're on to, to Well, because it, it was under 4,600. It was. I'll put it to you like this. It was either Frank Gore. I, obviously, I could have taken McGuire or Crowell. Uh, and obviously, I could have taken Alex Collins, which is who I thought about at first. But I yeah. just I, – I don't like Alex Collins. And uh, Mike Davis is in a timeshare. Time and I just – I feel like, you know, Frank Gore stands out. He's bold. This is this is the bold calls portion. I like it. I like it. I, I went with Frank Gore at 3,600. I Man, like I it. Feel, I feel like I should have gotten more bold. Now I feel bad about myself. You could have gotten Peyton Barber too, by the way. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I looked at him too. I, I did. I did. I promise you I'll do the same thing in some lineups and some – not tiny, not huge buy-ins, but some, some sizable buy-in – tournaments where i do the minimum running back thing and the minimum wide receiver thing you because know what uh it's since crazy you how often that works <laughs> like <laughs> it's so weird how much it works when you get yeah. them right it's, yeah yeah when you get them right i'm telling you it's crazy if, if you can get 20 from barber 25 from adams and then not, obviously it's a lot you know what i mean and then you you know you throw in one of the 5k guys we mentioned like you could do whatever you want with your lineup if those guys hit yeah. You know what? I'm going to go more bold with mine, very much in the same category, though. I'm going to go change mine to Rashad Penny, if you guys are good with that. I actually like that call better. Sure. Than like your, that was way better than the Carson call. Yeah, he could be starting to become the de facto number one running back. I mean, they love Carson, but Penny's starting to get heavily involved here. He's more um, talented. It's better for this game. Environment. He's more talented, but I don't think he entirely understands the he offense, uh, which is the like he's obviously going to – if he can get a grasp on the offense, he will be – the top running back there, and there's zero question about it, but it's just how many, much of a load they'll actually give him considering his lack of football knowledge. But um, I guess now we normally talk about who won the the game that we put on uh, at, for the question at the end of it, but there was one person that answered, and that dude has won two weeks in a row already, so I'm not giving it to you. So no one wins. I think you give it to him. I don't care. You call a dynasty is a dynasty, no matter how it comes about. I mean, he can't be a dynasty if he's running unimposed. He was the only. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You know what? Fine. Finsanity. You win again. Jeff Fisher would have been fantastic on the spot because it would have been an hour of me and Bobby berating him for being terrible at his job. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, there's a couple guys that I think are all tied for like really bad, like. Jeff Fisher, Hugh Jackson, jeez, uh, Mar- Marvin Marvin Lewis in Cincinnati. Like, when is he going to get fired? Like, wh- why does he still have a job? Oh gosh, uh, I don't, I don't know. There, NFL's inability to pick good head coaches is Jason Garrett. Oh gosh, good. Gosh, as some coaches are just terrible. I don't want to talk about this because it will just make me furious. How People are still not even paid. Like, John Gruden's the highest paid coach right now, I think, what, $10 million a year? And uh, Sean McVay is more valuable to his team for, what, $8 million a year than Jared Goff is for however much the $25 million he's going to get next year or two years from now whenever his contract expires. Yes. Also, guys, we'll end with this question here. You're starting an NFL team right now. Who would you rather have? 
Tom Brady or Bill Belichick? Bill Belichick. Will? Yeah, Bill Belichick. You guys are absolutely right. You both win the prize of not having to deal with me at all because we are going to get out of here. It's been fun. Dean will probably be back next week unless we decide to fire him. I don't think we will. He's a nice guy. I like that guy. But we are getting out of here. Well, thank you for joining us, Bobby. As always, it's been a fantastic time with you. Congrats on the big win this weekend. Let's double down this week twice because we have two slates. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Actually, let's end on this now. Best Thanksgiving, best part of Thanksgiving, best Thanksgiving food, Bobby. Uh, oh, I love all of it. I like the turkey and stuffing. I mean, I'm just going to go basic, but I, we do a lot of appetizer things. We do like these grilled, like brie, like little toasty things that are really delicious. So I'm excited about that. We got a huge Thanksgiving thing, so it's going to be fun. Will? Yeah, man. Uh, everything but you know i said stuffing earlier i i I just i love stuffy man i like it all year but for some reason on thanksgiving it's just got that extra special tastiness to it i i I love it i'm going with gravy because although i would not eat it on its own although i mean maybe if i was drunk i'd drink a saucer of gravy who really knows with me anymore but every thanksgiving food is not great unless gravy is added i don't want dry turkey i don't want mashed potatoes without gravy i don't want stuffing without gravy gravy is the key piece to a thanksgiving so guys make sure to make as much of it as you can and if you get drunk on thanksgiving then drink as much as you can just straight out of the saucer it's been fun guys that is actually the question i guess answer in the comment section of the podcast best thanksgiving uh food and Maybe I'll give you a t-shirt. Maybe I won't. Maybe Finsanity will just do the same thing and be the only guy that answers again. Who knows? But we are out of here. It's been fun. See you, kids.